I don't. Thanks for watching. No, but seriously, I don't regret becoming a data analyst, but there is a few things that I wish could have went differently. So the first thing is that when I first became a data analyst, I thought I needed a NoSQL beforehand. It turns out you have to use SQL all the time. I didn't really know this. I was just a college kid coming out. I knew I had my statistics degree. I thought I was going to come in and become a data analyst just like that, and it was going to be, you know, perfect marriage. Found out quickly that there were some things that I still didn't know, SQL being one of them. And then I'm like, oh crap, I have to learn this entirely new language or whatever you even want to call it, querying language. I had to learn it so quickly to be able to do my work. Turns out SQL isn't terribly hard. Um, so even if you're watching this now and you're not a data analyst, you can probably pick up SQL um, as long as you have a basic understanding of kind of how a database works, which I did at the time, you can pick up SQL pretty quickly. So it didn't matter. Second thing is I was glad that I knew R beforehand. Now coming into the job, I wasn't sure. I know some data analyst roles require you to use Excel. They might be, you know, the kind of position that uses Excel for that. Or they might use something like Python. Or they might be using Tableau a lot in, in combination with Excel. Things like that. Turns out, for my position, I was very glad to learn R in school. Being a statistics major, that's all we use. Knowing R beforehand really, really helps in the process of me becoming a data analyst. Coming into it, I wasn't sure because, you know, I hadn't heard of a lot of companies using R. But I think it's slowly being adopted by a lot of different companies. I know Google has their own trainings on R, so you can check that out if you want to. But knowing R is definitely a useful skill. And I think if you're going through a statistics major or you're learning R yourself, I don't think you're on a wrong path. So don't feel like you have to learn all these other technologies. I'm sure there's a position out there for you. I, I will say, though, it's not going to hurt if you decide to try to learn some other languages. Now, this one is kind of like a regret and a non-regret at the same time. Statistics has helped me in my job. The degree to which it helped me is much lower than I expected. I thought being a statistics major, you are just prepared for anything almost. Not really the case. I haven't used statistics much, but even even when I have, it's very little. I would say maybe 2-3% of the time, I'll use something that I picked up in statistics. Mainly it comes to doing something in R. And it's not necessarily using a statistical concept. But, nonetheless, I still think statistics is a great major for a lot of people watching this. Just because of the groundwork that it gives you for a lot of other things. I'm sure there's some things that unconsciously go through my head as I'm thinking through a problem at work. That actually do incorporate some level of statistics. It's just the formulas and concepts that are coming up in classes they're just not translating to a data analyst career. And I think that's totally fine. That's not a regret of mine. It's just saying, you know, on one hand, I wish I could have used my statistics degree a little bit more. But when you're building dashboards and querying data, for the most part, you're not going to be using statistics. Now, if you go into some deep analysis, sure, maybe you'll be using statistics. But you'll have to find out in whatever position you get. And hey, at this point in the video, if you're liking it, there's two links in the description. One's to a Discord where you have a lot of like-minded people who like data analytics, like statistics. We talk all the time, so check that out. And then the second one's to my newsletter. I don't send a lot of emails. I'm not going to spam you. But whenever something really important comes to my mind, I don't really have time to make a video on it, or I just want to flesh it out in more detail with a um, script like that, I'll be sending that off in the email. So check that out. All right, the next two things are going to be a little bit shorter. The pay is great. I do not regret the pay that I get as a data analyst. So I'll link a video maybe after this or in the comments or something, but I'll show you how I, I spend my money. And then the second thing is I get a lot of autonomy in my work. I don't have somebody breathing down my neck and telling me how to do something. I get a lot of creative freedom in how I want to story tell with the data or use the data or different data that I can pull in to achieve a similar result. So that's awesome. I'm glad that I'm not being micromanaged. The only thing is, sometimes maybe I do need a little bit of help, and it can be a little bit difficult to reach out and find time to meet with people, but it's not a regret of mine. It's just kind of a challenge of the job. But now for some things that I'm not ecstatic with. One thing is that sometimes it can be dry, especially if you're working, you know, a whole day on a long, complicated query that's pulling data into an application so that it can be used and understood and be efficient. That can be a little bit dry. I mean... I didn't expect, you know, a lot of that, but it's what a data analyst does. And that's usually the dirty work that people talk about, like cleaning data, getting it into a format you need for your analysis or for a dashboard. 
it's not always sunshine and rainbows. It's not always fun. And that part definitely is not always easy. So just keep that in mind if you want to become a data analyst. And then also just going through other people's code, which you do have to do fairly often as a data analyst. You have to go through, pick it apart, run it from top to bottom. Oftentimes you're not going to have all the packages installed. They might be pointing to a folder that is in their on their local computer, and then you have to figure out what's in that folder. You have to contact them, get that folder set up for yourself, and then point the code to the right place. It can just be really confusing, especially if it's not working properly or the person is not able to respond to you right away. It can just be very convoluted and confusing to run through other people's code. So one thing that I did pick up from school is to always comment your code out, you know, put little comments in the code to say what this function's doing. Be very detailed if you can. I know you don't like doing it. I don't like doing it, but it helps other people out in the long run, and that's always a good thing. And you'll thank me when you get some code that is well documented. Then the final thing is sometimes I can feel a little bit disconnected from the work that I've done in the past just because once I send off an analysis and people are happy with it or they get the information they need, oftentimes they just take it and run with it and I never hear back from them. I don't know what they did with that information. I don't know how they used it. I don't know if it was successful. That is one thing that I wish was a little bit more open at the company that I work for. But I'm sure it can be very hard to see even see the results, you know, especially with some of these longer horizon projects that you're doing, you're kind of forecasting off into the future, you're grabbing like three years worth of data to predict over the next year, and you're not going to know right away. And I'm sure by the time you do know, they're not remembering you, um, they're kind of figuring out if they need to change anything going forward. So those are my regrets as a data analyst. Hopefully, that helps you understand a little bit into my mind, a little bit into what goes into becoming a data analyst. And thanks for watching.